Our next guest here on stage, he's an energizing speaker, teaching audiences how to get exactly what they want. His audience comes away feeling inspired and clear with actionable takeaways. This spring, he released his first book titled, The Hunt, How to Track Down and Take the Targets in Your Life. He's an enthusiastic outdoorsman and lifelong hunter. He created a platform for allowing individuals to track business and life goals through his hunt system. He hosts one of the most active business pages on Facebook, and his page has evolved into a combination of authenticity, wit, humor, and candor. He's the chairman and founder of the Carbon Media Group, the largest media company focusing on the outdoor audience, with nearly 30 million unique visitors each month. He's a graduate of Michigan State University, and he and his wife and Dean have three young boys, Hunter, River, and, River, and Fisher. Please welcome David Farbman. David? So, I know it's been said a lot of times, but I want to say it one more time to all the ladies out there, happy Valentine's Day. And because I know this is being recorded and my wife would murder me if I didn't say it, sweets, happy Valentine's Day to you. I miss you so much and I can't wait to see you and the boys when I'm back in Michigan tomorrow. You know, being a public speaker, I get to speak in some pretty cool venues around the country and I get to speak to some pretty cool audiences. But I can honestly tell you that in my career, I have never been in front of an audience that I am as honored and as humbled to be in front of as I am 1,400 of my brothers and sisters of the outdoors. I love the sport of hunting. So I think it's important that I start out and talk about my definition of hunting. You see, I believe that hunting has far more to do with the hunt than it does the kill. And I believe that hunting is any time we passionately pursue a goal. And I believe that whether you're hunting a new car, whether you're hunting a new house, a business deal, or a freak nick 200 inch boner muley, it's all about hunting and hunting down that which we are after. So to really drive this home, I'd like to talk about a couple of whom I would consider to be the most famous hunters to ever live. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs hunted down intuitive technology at a level that amazes. Did you know that the iPad has only existed for four years? And I bet every single person in this room, in your family, today has an iPad. It's safe to say Steve Jobs was a pretty damn good hunter. And how about Mark Zuckerberg, right? Mark Zuckerberg, who created Facebook, continues to hunt for all six billion people in this world to connect across his social network. And so before I get going, I'd like to ask a question and, you know, show me a little applause, show me a little love on this. How many of us can agree that this, growing the sport of hunting and preserving healthy wildlife conservation is our common goal? Come on, give me a little more love. So I fully agree with this. And that's why, in 2006, I set out to do what was probably the craziest thing that I've ever done in my business career. I launched the first ever professional hunting tour. It was called the World Hunting Association, or the WHA. And what made this idea so ridiculous in hindsight and radical was that we tried to create a non-fatal professional hunting league. And we patented 
a way to take a tranquilizer and put it into a blunted broadhead so that we wouldn't kill animals in competition. As crazy as it is today, my logic was that this would help to bring over more of the neutrals or non-hunters towards the sport of hunting. So I thought when I launched this thing that it was going to be huge. And I thought it was a no-brainer. <laughs> and a no-brainer is exactly what it turned out to be. I literally pissed off everyone. So get this. Somehow, I pissed off the NRA and PETA. <laughs> right? Who gets caught in that pickle? I actually managed to do it. But like any hunter that comes off trail, sometimes you got to change the hunt. And so I was able to go and meet with all these NGOs that I hadn't gone and met with before. And I met with all the big organizations and the powers that be like yourselves in this industry. And together we morphed through different iterations of that business. And that same mishunt turned out to become Carbon Media Group. It's Outdoor Hub, Action Hub, Ag Hub. We have over 700 websites, and we band together 30 million outdoorsmen a month, all off of a mishunt. But it was all about going for that target. That was what I was after. And so since we've all agreed that this is the target that we're after, let's get ready to do a little bit of hunting. So the hunt. The hunt is antis against you. Let's look at what they're using. They're using signage. They're using passion. They're using emotion. They're using the internet effectively. And we're fighting from a little bit more conservative or traditional place. The facts. And I hate this fact. You are not winning this fight. You aren't winning right now. And what you're looking at is my Facebook page. And what's going on on this page is I was containing an anti. And I do this through being up the middle with relentless offense. And by that I mean we are all hunters. It's just a question of what targets are you hunting? And sometimes the antis have highly misdirected targets. And yesterday, I was in California speaking at Facebook. And as I was speaking to the heads of all of monetization in Facebook, this head of content was amazed that I've been able to contain the anti-voice. But it's not rocket science. It's not magic. It's relentless, consistent messaging and up the middle. So let's look at the weapons they're using. They're using famous people, right? They're using big crowds. They're using Facebook. They're using social media. And they fight dirty. On the other hand, we're fighting a more traditional and conservative fight. Now look, the late great Einstein says that Insanity is defined by doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I am not saying that everything we're doing is insane, but sometimes I feel like the battles we continue to get into have a bit of insanity behind them. And so, sometimes what you need to do is you need to go on offense. Right here, we have a guy beating a seal, and this sits on PETA's homepage of their website. Now, I'm willing to bet that not too many of us in this room have ever taken a club and gone and beaten up a seal and killed it. And while that sounds ridiculous, it's more ridiculous to even entertain it or fight with it. They will continue to use ridiculous edged banter, but really what we need to do is get on offense. But first, you gotta get above it, right? 
when I'm at home and I'm with my wife and I'm with the kids and everybody's screaming and my wife's mad at me, which happens regularly, and she's ready to go nuts on me, I have two choices, right? I can get down here in my ego with that same recurring thought and I can get in the weeds and I can fight or I can get above the situation and stay focused on the target, right? Our target is to grow the sport of hunting and to preserve a healthy tomorrow. But we gotta get above it and clear to where we can see the data clearly, to where we can make intelligent decisions and stay focused on the target. Remember this, we cannot fall for the 1%. And you might say, what's the 1%? So let's talk about that. On the internet, it looks like this. It's some chicken you know what, sitting behind a handle, throwing crazy messages in about how we're murderers or we're killers. It's some ridiculous no one, and then we take the bait. And when we fight that fight, we're not going to win. You can't fight that fight. The bloody seal wins each time. Instead, neutralize it. Look at how well the NRA and how well we did against that issue with assault weapons. And it was done in the end out of logic and out of a good up the middle position. And so what I'm saying is that I believe that the time has come for real time execution. And by real time execution, what I mean is that it's time to pivot. It's time to come up the middle with offense and with true passion and authenticity. So what does that look like, passion and authenticity? Well, I don't know about you, but I remember the way that the leaves sound every moment that I've stalked a muley in my life. I remember the first time my son Hunter sat next to me and I saw the sunrise and I saw the sun set. I've seen sunrises that bring a tear to my eye. To me, that is passion, and that is authenticity. And I think it's time that we fight offensively with the passion of our sport and don't continue to get suckered in to always fighting about bashed in seals. And when we do this, we also need to be responsible and accountable as hunters. Right, and so what I mean by responsible is not don't celebrate the hunt. By all means, celebrate the hunt. There's nothing better than walking up on Mr. Sad Daddy on the ground. It's the greatest thing in the world. But appropriately done, when we're with our friends, it's different. But when we're out in public, and I know this might bum some people out, but cover the animal when it's transported. So I know you think, why? I want to show off my buck. But the problem is, all it takes is the one wrong mom with those two kids that rolls next to you and sees some blood coming down the side of that vehicle. And one of those kids gets a bad memory, we just lost potentially a future hunter. That's being responsible. And now, my challenge to every single person in this room to all of the NGOs that are on this side of the field, to every media outlet, intermedia, outdoor channel, sportsman channel, pursuit channel, Bonnier, and all of our properties at Carbon Media Group, my challenge is this. This year, this next hunting season, commit to taking one new hunter to the field. Just one hunter even a dormant hunter that hasn't hunted in a number of years. When we do this, we really can change the hunt and change the numbers. And I'm a numbers guy, I'm a business guy, and we can change the numbers one hunter at a time if we decide to, if we decide that we're willing to sacrifice that hunt in order to preserve a healthy tomorrow. So I believe the time has come to change the hunt. Because together, when we're all hunters focused on a common goal, we're gonna kill it every time. 
Good luck to antis trying to get in the way of that wrath. Good luck to anyone trying to step in the way. Because together, we can change the hunt. And we can move the needle today. One hunter, each of us, commit to it. And watch how we change the hunt. And remember that when we're hunters, success is always in season. And as I used to say in the WHA, the hunt is on. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Great message. It's the future of our sport.